I think case in point was yesterday with the Eagles. I mean, a win's a win in the NFL. And I think I think even Barrett and Jaws were like chastising me because I got a little down on the team. But the bar has been raised. The bar has been raised significantly for this Eagles team. We're back. Happy Monday, everybody. It's an Eagles. It's a Phillies. It's a Mets lose kind of Monday here on Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Man, oh, man, what a week we have coming up. Starting tomorrow, you have the Phillies against the Braves in the NLDS. Fast forward to next Sunday night, it's the Eagles and the Cowboys. It does not get much better. You know what? Yes, it does. It does right now because we have Michael Barkan from NBC Sports Philadelphia. Yes. Oh, he's throwing punches. Oh, he's already he's – already, He's already throwing the punches. He's ready to rock and roll. Michael B., welcome to the show. How you doing, my man? Mike, Thank Mike. You, man. Oh, what's up, man? You're not smiling. Gunner smiling. Robbie smiling. Hey, there's my double B. There he is, buddy. He misses you. It's been a long time since you guys were together. Right. I know, I know. It's since we got up this morning. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. The wrong side of the bed. What's up, gentlemen? Michael, just think about this from a and, and you you know at heart we're all fans, right? We get into this business because we love sports and we love the teams and all that kind of stuff, and it's fun. But to have a week like this in front of us, man, and I know it's it's Monday, and uh, you, we're still looking back at the game yesterday and all that. But man, what's on deck here? To, to we haven't had this in eleven years with the Phillies, and we have an Eagles Cowboys game with the Eagles undefeated after five games. It's pretty wild. It's the beauty of Philadelphia sports, sports in general, but certainly Philadelphia sports. You can be down on your luck to the nth degree, and all of a sudden things turn around. They're unforeseen. And certainly at the end of September, when the Phillies were in the midst of a five-game losing streak, I don't know if we thought we'd be here right now. I think I thought they had it in them as long as everything was put together perfectly. And I, I didn't know whether or not that was going to happen after thinking that especially toward the end of the first half of the season, they were pretty good. And and when Topper took over, they were really good. Uh, the Eagles, I think we saw this coming and, and Barrett and Gunner can, I'll defer to you, the two of you, but we were talking to, uh, on the post game show yesterday, or maybe it was pregame, and, and um, asking Ruben about when when did you see this coming? He said, "Well, well, you definitely saw the moves with regard to the Eagles in the off season, and then you saw training camp and what they had at their disposal, and you thought this is going to be pretty good." Talking to our old pal Ray Dittinger, um, this is way before the season began, and he said, "Mike, they they might win their first six games, Mike," and and, um, and sure enough, it may come to pass. <laughs> I love your Ray, by the way. <laughs> you got to do the sigh first. Well, yeah, they they possibly could win six straight, Mike, to open it up. And I was talking to him last night on the way home, Barrett and Gunner and Robbie, uh, and he's he's sticking to that. You know, he, he's sticking to that. And you look across the NFC, who's that good that they don't have a chance? He was talking about them maybe going thirteen and four or even fifteen and two. Ray, Ray oh yeah. my god. Well, the, the 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 conference is not great. It's not. Uh, yeah, it's not. You know. Yeah. So, but it's exciting. It, it is really, really exciting, and um, it's it's the reason I love what we do. Is 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 all of this excitement? There, there's real stuff going on in the world. We're in the fun and games department, and I'm I'm blessed to be so. All I ever wanted to do. Talk to you guys. Are you kidding well, me? In the studio. <laughs> Michael, you, you need much higher goals in life. <laughs> well, well, that's, been, that's been said. I'm sorry. But to me, I've, I've attained the goal being here. Well, Michael, let's start with this one from a Phillies perspective. They, they, they remove the interim tag and they give it a two-year extension to Rob Thompson for 23 and 24 seasons. I don't think anybody would argue, you know, nobody more worthy than this. But I love doing it now on the heels of this upcoming series it just gives the players a little bit more, like a little bit more bonding. Our guy, we had his back. He's got our back. Let's go. Yeah. In 1988 or 89, the Eagles gave Randall Cunningham a five-year deal. And I don't know what the worth of the contract was, but it was the morning of the season opener. They were playing the Redskins in Washington, and he only went out and threw five touchdown passes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we could see something similar with regard to the Phillies. At least I hope so. This team loves Rob Thompson. They want to play for him. He's gotten the most out of them. He never frets when they go through a losing spell. He, 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 he is all about his guys. And I think he's used them, especially the bullpen. He has used them great. And I think the timing of this 
was perfect. And we've had plenty to say about the timing being not perfect with regard to our Philadelphia teams. This is awesome. You do it today. It's not the day of, so it doesn't get in the way. It's the day before. I'm sure the team, when they found out, were over the moon. They're going to be pumped for this guy. And uh, and Philadelphia Phillies fans should be pumped about it, too. He's He's been a really good manager. I don't want to go too crazy on it, but he's been a really good manager. And this team is, what, fourth or fourth? Fifth best record in baseball since he took over June third. That's saying something. Yeah. So, Absolutely. but they've got the talent too. Yeah. Go ahead, Derek. You muted. I think. Dang it. Um, I've always Push said up. that. You know what? A lot. Of, a lot of teams. A lot of teams in sports make the mistake of you have an interim manager in place, and then all of a sudden they go outside the organization looking for that next great manager to get this team over the hump. And I thought it I thought it was best stated by the physical actions of the players all season long, the way they responded to this guy, especially when things were not going that well. When you look at the money and the talent they had on this team, and it wasn't going that well in May, and kudos to the organization for identifying we need to make a switch now. We have too much talent here. I thought it I thought it was spoke volumes in terms of body language and productivity, the way this team has responded to Rob Thompson all season long. So that's why I'm so glad that they, they made sure, especially when you got a big series like this one coming up against the Atlanta Braves, the defending champions. You know, people always talk about, you know, a, a professional athlete should not need extra motivation to play the game. Well, sometimes you do. And, and, yeah. and I think that speaks <laughs> volumes in terms of, what this organization thought of Thompson and the strategic moment that they picked on the eve of going up against the defending World Series champions to announce that they that this guy is going to be calling the shots for you for the next couple of years. Completely agree, Gunner. And I think there are a few in this world, not, not everybody, but there are a few in this world that don't need a little pat on the back from time to time. Uh, we work with a producer, Robbie, I know you know, Sean Kane. I could mispronounce my own damn name. And he would say, great job. Great job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Am I right? Close Bobby? enough. You'll get it next oh, yeah. time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great, 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 great job. And and I don't care if he's lying. It makes me feel good. You know? <laughs> yeah. I think that's not a, not, not a little thing. I think that's a huge thing in human dynamics. And I, I think that move did two things. One, it helped Rob Thompson get the best out of the roster. But two – it also served to hold a mirror up to the roster itself, and these guys were ashamed. They should have been ashamed. You got yeah. Bryce Harper and Nick Castellanos and Kyle Schwarber and Reese Hoskins and Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola and all these guys and these young kids. And that's the other thing I think he did. I think he, he held the light up for the young kids. He got yeah. them to the top. Yeah. And and um, I remember Larry Brown doing that as well, the the – might have been what was it, 2000, 2001 season when they went to the finals? Raja Bell and some of those guys. Yeah, yeah. they were young yeah. guys that he that he got in there early in the season and let them go through all the all the the pressure cooker of late in games. Mm -hmm. And so when they got to the postseason, it wasn't as big a jump for for the team. And I think that's exactly what Topper did with uh, with. Bohm, who I know is not a rookie, but Bryson Stott and Matt Beerling, who I know is not a rookie, but mm -hmm. they're young players, and he and he really had them baptized by fire. And sometimes it didn't work too well, but sometimes it did. And now you look at a guy like Bryson Stott or Beerling or Bohm. Look at look at the way Bohm's played those first two games, and, and I think that's really important to get them exposed to that because. And, and Barrett, we've been talking about this with regard to Jalen Hurts. Everybody, you know, the, the, he was under the pressure cooker for the moment he, he finished last season. If he doesn't do it next year, they're really going to have to start looking for a quarterback. But if you look at Joe Burrow and you look at Kyler uh, Murray, who are, his, who, who are his colleagues, really, and Murray was his predecessor at Oklahoma, you look at these guys, they're being talked about as the quarterback of the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to have some road bumps along the way, but they're going to be great eventually. That was never said about Jalen Hurts until this year. And, and and I think that sometimes we need to wait a little bit for guys to blossom. Sometimes it does take a while for the game to slow down, as they say. And and we all know from our own jobs and, and what we do. So it, it takes a while for you not to panic in certain uh, situations. And, and, um, and I think that that's what has happened to Jalen Hurts. That's what's happened to the daycare, as, as we've been calling them affectionately, for the Phillies. Takes a little while, and you got to stay with it. But we want the instant gratification. So if it doesn't happen, done. And, uh, what, and that's a shame. 
Well, you know, you know, getting back to the to the Phillies, man. Um, do they have enough going into this series um, at, at the starting pitcher? Do they have enough going into si- series? I would say hell yes, they have enough. Now, you know, mm. I don't know. About, they just signed. Um, who's the kid? Who's the rookie pitcher for Strider? Spencer Strider. Yeah, they yeah. just gave him an extension. Guy, yep. They just gave him an extension, and that guy worries me because the, the Phillies yeah. have had difficulty hitting him. He's really good. Max Fried, I think they kind of, they, you know, they have solved him at, at various times. Um, but I think the pitchers, uh, I know it's going to be Ranger. And by the way, what I had heard was, what I, again, heard, and it never came to pass, was that if there was a game three in the wild card series, Ranger might not have been the guy. They might have gone with an opener like an Eflin or like a Cindergaard and, and started it. I hesitate to say Kyle Gibson, but it didn't come to pass, so no big deal. But I think Ranger Suarez is going to be fine in this situation tomorrow afternoon. They're going to have the bullpen. It's all hands on deck, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, Wheeler goes the next day, and, and he goes on regular rest. Nola goes on, on one day longer rest, which is really important for Aaron Nola. And you look at his record when he pitches – on regular rest, as they say, four days rest versus five days rest, and it's a different record entirely for Aaron Nola. So that extra day is a good thing for him. And Wheeler, I'd use Wheeler till his arm falls off, for goodness sakes. You don't yeah, know really. when he's going to be here again, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and he is a stud. Yeah, he is. So I'm, I'm, I'm confident about the pitching. It's the hitting that, that I'm shaky about. Well, the, exactly. yeah, and maybe I keep saying this all the time whenever Harper does something, but maybe that home run gets him going. And it seems like those guys start to file, you know, follow suit when he gets, gets hot, Michael. I mean, let's face it. They win game one out of just pure grit in that, in that ninth inning. It's not because really the big boys, you, you know, deliver for you. But I thought Harper hitting that one Saturday was a little bit of a message sender. And maybe that carries over for him. I, I hope so. And, and the only thing I was wondering is whether or not there are any kind of nagging injuries that, that are lingering with, with Harper. Yeah. I don't think his elbow is an issue other than in the field. But but I, I thought the same thing because that thing was a blast. Oof. And it went out in a hurry <clears throat> and had a arc to it. And I thought, okay, maybe he is back. The, the thing that confounded me when he returned on August 26th from two months away was that in the previous times he had been laid up when he came back, he just, he just hit the ground running and it was, he got hit in the face last season for God's sakes. And he came back and picked up won the MVP. So, so I, I, when I saw that he was struggling and he was, I mean, he, he was batting like 220 or something from August 26th until, until the end of the season, not great with three, four home runs, not a lot of runs batted in OBP was down. And and I, I really, I wondered where, what was wrong. Um, but that home run was huge, and sometimes it gets psychological for all of them. Uh, also, you'll recall, when he came back from injury, he's normally batting third, and I think maybe he batted third that first game back on, on August 26th, and then Topper put him to clean up, and I didn't think that was the place for him, and I thought that messed with his head a little bit. That's right. just me. Uh, but he's, he's back at clean up again, uh, or going back and forth, and it worked out. Wait, was he batting? Th- I'm trying to remember. No, he clean up. He batted. He batted clean up even in the second game, right? I believe so. I, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll check it. But while, while we speak about it, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know because a uh, left right stuff whether or not they did it. They had real Muto batting batting third. So, but but uh, when you look at the lineup on its face, it looks pretty good. You know, I mean, it looks it looks real good. He was clean uh, up, Mike. Both both games. Yeah. Oh, both games. Okay. Yep. Um, um, so that looked and, menacing. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it should. Uh, you know, it would be nice if Castellanos would do freaking something. Like that would be beautiful. If he just did freaking something. Here we you know? go. Here we go. Uh, all right. I got a vent for a minute. Here we Can go. I vent for a second here. Okay. Just a happy go lucky show until you started. This. No. I look. Look. I, 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 I am tell you that you just said. I, I don't know if I recall it, but go ahead. No, but and then I got to listen to Michael get Castellanos. It's Castellanos. Oh, anyway. Okay. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't that. mean that, Robbie. I meant because I haven't heard from the guy all season. I agree That's with you. And I, you wow. actually, Michael, I loved it on uh, Saturday. Hey, he had a good, he had a good August. He had a good yeah. August. Yeah, okay. Well, you're, you're look the stream. Long, buddy. <laughs> but you were great because you took a little veiled shot Saturday and like Ricky and, and Ben were kind of like, <laughs> come on, man. But I was with you on that anyway. Uh, yeah, okay. story. Uh, but no, I, I he needs to come through because Schwarber, for what, as hot and cold as he is, and he is crazy hot and cold. Sorry, 46 is 46, man. That's a lot of home runs, right? And 
Harper was was playing like an MVP until he broke the thumb, and I could give him a, a you know a bit of an, a, a pass for that. But and a lot of other guys really stepped up. But Castellanos is a guy who really needs to start coming through for this team in a big way. But I don't want to I don't want to get off on that. But let me ask you about Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Castellanos. Yeah, that guy. No, wait a minute. You wait, wait a minute. Well, it, you, yeah. you, want no, to I, I mean, you want to single out Castellanos, okay? But you brought up a valid point a few moments ago. The top four in this lineup are, are, are no shows for the most part. They were, they, one for six, they were one for 16 on Friday and two for 16 on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So say what you want to say about You're Castellanos. Right. That's true. But your big money ball players in a funny order. Okay, Harper finally hits a home run. Schwarber hits an occasional home run. Not like the home – when he was hitting the ball in July and in, 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 in August he tail, is, is when the tail off started yeah. and it's continued. You're not so, wrong, Derek. You're not wrong. A, I, I don't see, disagree with that. Yeah. No, so no, no, so get off Castellanos. Get off of him. You know, here's, but here's the other thing, Gunnar, and, and you, Barrett, and Rob know me better than anybody in, the, in, in this town. Uh, and, and you know I am a sucker for nice guys. And from the moment he came to Philadelphia telling John Clark, you said one question. You know, and 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 being like he was, he was really a, a active. He's a mope. Like, to him, he was like a mope. Yeah. And, yeah. and and then the whole thing with Jim Salisbury, who I think you all three agree is the nicest guy you ever want to meet. Yes. And no and to do what he did to Jim Salisbury, can someone explain this to him? I mean, embarrass him in front. Okay, you want to do that when you're batting three hundred? You're still a jerk. But but at least bat three hundred. At yeah. least make some plays. You want to do that, and you're not. Then I, I have no time for you. Then you bet. Then get that. Get out. I mean, just get out. <laughs> Other than that, I love the guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let, let's go positive. Let's go bold. Yes, let's go positive. I, the the defensive transformation of Alec Bohm has been nothing short of just amazing. And to think he out defended Nolan Arenado in that series. Both games, one and two, he came up with some money clutch plays. That is one of the more amazing things that we've seen, what he's transformed into. And again, it, it, it's the evolution of a young player. It's the evolution of a guy. He's played third. He's played first. Um, he, he was new to Major League Baseball last season. Certainly at the beginning of this season, you make three errors in one inning and, and, and you say, I hate this town or I hate this place, whatever it was he said. That, that, that puts you in bad standing. And then he comes back again, the, the good guy theory. He comes back and said, no, I didn't mean it. I shouldn't have said it. Next day he gets a standing ovation when he comes to the plate. I mean, we get a guy like that. We know how much he wants to win. And, and – uh, certainly all athletes are like this, but in particular baseball players, man, they are just flatlined. They're all like Jalen Hurts. It doesn't make a difference how much you win by. They're all like Aaron Nola. They, they seem like they don't have a pulse. And Alec Bohm is of that mold. He's just cool, calm, and collected. And he said to Taron Hatcher after the game, you know, pe people say I, I can't field. Like, I don't care what they say. And I liked hearing that from him. But the fact of the matter, I said this, like, I said, Alec, you have had a problem with fielding time and time, my friend. <laughs> and I think that that will occur. I, I don't know if, if we're ever going to see the consistency that we would like. We're, we're, he's never going to be Mike Schmidt or Scott Rowland, I don't think. And sometimes there are plays that those in between balls that Derek Gunn can feel with a plum. Uh, that, That's that right. You better believe it. I know it. I've seen it happen. Um, and and, and <laughs> I, I think Alec Bohm has issue. You know, he struggles with those plays sometimes. Yeah. And tell me, you weren't how many how many assists did he have the other night? Seven. I think he had seven putouts or, or seven assists. And. and how many of those were you thinking, oh, I hope he doesn't overthrow Hoskins. I hope he makes the throw right. I hope he gets it. You know, and that, that blink of an eye, when you know the ball's going to him, I'm thinking, please, please, build it cleanly. And yeah. he did every time, which is great. But I still think we're all thinking in the back of our head, is it going to be, a, you know, uh, an expedition with this mm -hmm. guy? That's mm -hmm. all. Fair so, enough. Mike, so, Michael, what do you think has to happen for this Phillies team if they're going to have a chance against Atlanta in this series? Well, I, I think they – They've got to get on the board early. And you look at their record, and this might be the case with, with any number of teams in the playoffs, if not all of them. But if the Phillies score the first run, they're 56 wins, 21 losses if they mm. score first in the regular okay. season. That is a huge that, – that's like a 110-win uh, schedule if, if you're going at 162. That's the kind of winning percentage that is. They've got to score first. And, and um, it, they've been hard pressed to do that. Sometimes Schwarber gets hot; he'll give you a leadoff home run on the first pitch. Sometimes they don't score till the fifth or sixth inning. 
But the the one thing that I'm certain of is is baseball is the type of sport, and the Phillies are a type of team that they just keep firing, and 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 hopefully something clicks, even if it's later in the game. Um, they were three and sixty, three wins, sixty losses when trailing after the eighth inning in that oh, game okay. one. Yeah, and that's not that's not a good average, but they they just keep at it, and mm-hmm. and I think that says a lot about what they can possibly do. It's going to be tough against Atlanta. I mean, Atlanta's not the, not just the the, uh, the division winner. Uh, they didn't just run down the Mets and, and overtake them and win the division. They're the reigning world champions, and they did it without Freddie Freeman, for goodness yep. sake. Yep. He's an MVP himself. So, so that tells you how good they are. And, and I also think that this um, – you know, it, it tests the team. It, it really, uh, it, it, it's a baptism by fire, I said before. I think the Braves, they've been there. They've been to the World Series, and they've won it. And I, so I obviously give an edge to them because of that. But don't be surprised if, if the Phillies, especially because of their starting pitching, if if they take this outright uh, or they definitely take it to five games. It would not surprise me. I'm, I'm hoping. My fingers are crossed. Mm. You know, mm, we'll I hear you. I hear you. But it's, I, it's an it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time, man. Speaking so, of that, it's been a long time yeah. since we've had this. Yeah. So in addition, and you guys did, by the way, a great job all the way through from Monday last Monday night. I can't believe it's only been a week <laughs> when they when they clinched against the Astros all the way through. You know, with the postseason stuff and you know the back and forth celebrations. You get a phenomenal Thank job by, by the entire yeah. crew. Um, you also do the Eagles uh, pre and post with with our with some guy Barrett Brooks. You, we, we may be familiar with. <laughs> uh, so uh, I I got to get your impress. Yesterday's kind of a weird game. You win, and that really should be all that matters ultimately in the NFL. But we know that you know it wasn't maybe the prettiest of wins yesterday, and people have some concerns. What, what's your sense, Michael, of the of the Birds win over the Cardinals? I don't know. I mean, I, I'd, I'd love to hear from Barrett and Gunner on this. We certainly Barrett and I talked about it yesterday with, with Jaws and Ruben Frank. But, you know, uh, you remember that old wide world of sports open, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat and how Mike Schmidt changed it to in Philadelphia. You get to experience the thrill of victory and the agony of reading about it the next day. <laughs> and, and I think case in point was yesterday with the Eagles. I mean, a win's a win in the NFL. And I think I think even Barrett and Jaws were like chastising me because I got a little down on the team. But the bar has been raised. The bar has been raised significantly for this Eagles team. They look really good in the in the first four games of this season. And, and they look really good in the first half uh, of this one. They should have gotten more points. Perhaps they didn't. And I thought, all right, they're, they're really going to come out strong. And they did. They got the ball in the third quarter. They did come out strong. And then they kind of fell flat and everything got a little bit stale. So I, I think when, when we look back in, at the first four games and see what they did, the expectation is that they're just going to be devastating to another team each and every game. It just doesn't go like that. They're going to lose a game uh, at, at some point. And I just didn't think it was going to be as, as sloppy as it was yesterday. I also thought it was interesting how Jalen Hurts, he took the whole thing on his shoulders. He said he was he let down his teammates after the game. I don't know if I'd go that far because these guys, are it, it, it's imperfect. You know, the other team is across the line trying to make you miss. So, so um, I think they're going to be fine. I think they are, are growing with each week. I don't know how, I don't know how good they are relative to any of the elite teams that we have seen in the past. Uh, the NFL is a little bit more watered down now, I think. But you look at Green Bay losing to the Giants. We thought the Giants were going to stink this year. Yep. Now they're four nope. one. Yep. So I don't. Yeah, we thought we thought Minnesota wasn't that that good. They're long losses to the Eagles. Detroit. I mean, you know, gave them a battle early until they they uh, exerted themselves. So I don't know what to expect. Dallas coming in at four and one with Cooper Rush at quarterback. Don't sleep on Dallas. And and, and then the next week's a bye week. You, you don't want to lose to any team, but you certainly don't want to lose to Dallas going into the bye week. You'd love That's to right. have that. It's not Dallas. happening, baby. It's That's not right. happening. That's right. Love to hear it. <laughs> By the way, I, I showed member Barrett yesterday. If um, if you start out 6-0 and in an NFL season, going back to 1990, teams that start out 6-0, and you got a 90-plus percent chance of making the playoffs, and you have a 22% chance of winning the Super Bowl. If you were five and zero, oh, 
that was like a 15% chance. It jumps to 22, and it keeps going higher as you win. So uh, I, I think things are looking up for the birds, but uh, I'm nervous about this Dallas game because it's yeah. Dallas, you know. Well, we'll and, and and Dallas's strength is getting after the quarterback, uh, right? And yeah. the offensive line right now, through injuries, uh, has been a little bit compromised in, in some ways. But that's it's going to be a huge aspect. And, and you know, on the other side, we talked a lot about the defense today, man. They better be be able to get after him. They better be able to get after whether it's Dak or Cooper Rush. If they're not, it's going to be a long night. It's going to be a long right. night. Well, first, first in line, Barrett, and you tell me that at one point in yesterday's game, they were missing three fifths. Of That's your right. starting offensive line, so yep. so you got Mylotta out for the game. Dickerson went out, Kelsey went out, and I think they've got they've got talent even at the backup positions. Um, but you need to, I would think you need a week's worth of practice if you put those guys in there. Uh, you know, uh, Opeta and Driscoll, you you put those guys in there. Uh, I would think and give them a week's worth of practice. It would look a little bit different than it did yesterday, wouldn't it? No, yeah, it absolutely it, it would. No. It would. No. It, would look, it would look a lot better because no. you have the game no. plan. You have the game plan for guys like that. You know, you just can't think that they're going to go in and just play. You know, well they do. They go in and they play well. But if you have them in the offense and you game plan them, you're gonna you're gonna tend to run the ball more when you have those guys in there. I don't know why they didn't this last game. They yeah. totally forgot to run for two and a half uh, quarters. But you can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So I I think they learned from this. Um, Steichen learned from this. Even Gannon learned from uh, what we what he went through yesterday. And uh, you know, you have a be- much better effort from this point. The, o- the only reason I said no, Mike, is because I don't want to see my third left tackle going up against Dallas's pass rush. And Opeta is a much better run blocker than he is a pass blocker. I don't mm-hmm. want to see happen again this coming Sunday. What happened this past Sunday? Um, them trying to throw the ball more than running the ball. If there's, if Dallas is susceptible at one thing, is they give up chunks of real estate in the running game. Every other aspect of their defense is thoroughly efficient except the run game. They're inconsistent. They bow up at times, but they give up big real estate. And I don't want to have to go on that game with Driscoll lining up next to a Peta on their left side because that's not a good scenario. That's the only reason right. I said no real quick. Right, 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 right I think right. that's more than you said on the postgame show yesterday. <laughs> now, believe it or not, <laughs> believe it or not, we have found a way. We have found a way to curtail one Seth Joyner. He still no. says what he's going to say. Oh, yeah. See, I, I'd love to jump in and disagree with him just to set him off. Okay. All right. I'll live, I live for the moment. I'll live for the moment. Let me know how that goes. But, but you're right. I, I, you know, you're, you're right. But they also won a Super Bowl with um, with replacements on the left side of that line. And um, and I'm hoping – I haven't heard about what, what's going on. Kelsey – Rolled his ankle. I know that. I don't know what what happened with uh, with Dickerson, Dickerson um, yeah. who went out. But he he came back also. And then Kelsey's a friggin' stud. Yeah. I mean, oh, to, yeah. uh, we thought we, we were talking about. Well, he'll be uh, as Ruben Frank said yesterday. We were hoping that he would be back back by by the Pittsburgh game, and he comes back later in the game. So, um, and then he, he says after the game, I tend to be a little dramatic sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, you we, dramatic? No, oh, Kelsey. Yeah, yeah. No, Kelsey. Yeah, Kelsey. Yeah, right. Oh, okay, all right. You're taking yeah. a little shot at Michael, our guest. No, oh, no. dramatic too. I, can't I would dramatic. never do that. Oh, Michael knows. I'm not a future Hall of Fame, but he is a future Hall of Famer, isn't he? Hundred percent. Jason Kelsey. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hundred percent. I mean, he's he's just a, unbelievable what what he does, how he leads the team, and I would think he's also a calming presence in that mm-hmm. huddle. Um, so. Yeah, I, I have uh, I'm I'm thinking good thoughts about this this Dallas game. I love that it's here. I love that it's Sunday night, and um, and then we'll we'll get to think about Pittsburgh for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And this will be the first time if they win. What they were they were seven and zero in um, in in TOs at, at two thousand four. Yeah, they, this yeah. is the third time in franchise history they're five and zero. It was eighty one oh four in this year, but yeah, the the TO year they took it a step further than eighty one did. I said we said to Jaws yesterday. I said, what happened in that eighty-one year, Jaws? You finished at five and six after that start in yeah. in, uh, in eighty-one, but uh, then we had to go against the Giants in the playoffs. And he was he was explaining it like he still was playing. Oh God, and I'm like, sure. Yeah, yeah, but, but um, uh, yeah. 
So, Michael, give us the uh, the the lowdown here. What that we got a one thirty game tomorrow, uh, game one, and I believe the other one oh seven. I'm sorry, one oh seven, and then a four thirty yep. on two uh, on yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. So, when when are you? What is your your uh, pre? When's your post? We uh, hour, yeah, we got an hour pre tomorrow, okay. uh, and that we are full up. Uh, we thought we might be doing a half an hour, but but we have an hour pre. Even Barrett's involved tomorrow. He doesn't know it. I'm telling him. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy, enjoy, man. <laughs> so, uh, up now. Yeah. Uh, Barrett doesn't have enough going on. He needs he needs we, more we jobs. Got, yeah. we, got, we got an hour pre with um. With Ricky Bell, uh, Ben Davis, Ruben Amaro Jr. in the studio. And then in Atlanta will be uh, Jim Salisbury, will be Tom McCarthy, and will be John Clark with, with all the uh, interviews and analysis from Atlanta. That'll be fun. And then game time is at 107. And last out recorded, we got the post game program. And I'm um, looking forward to that. And, and also, I love the fact, uh, I don't know what you guys thought about the wild card series and the fact that it was played at one team's field and it was played three straight days right, right. but but to me it kind of had the feel of like a like an ncaa tournament you know yeah, everybody's yeah. playing get the first round games going yeah. um and i wouldn't mind seeing that uh, uh um with, with the nlds as well yeah. because it's best of five i don't i don't want to stagger the starts have all the teams there, there's there's the same same number of games let's have all the teams play on the same day i think that's awesome i, like <laughs> I think it. i think it's spread <laughs> out too much have, they spread it out too much. I yeah. wish they were playing every day. Well, I'll yeah. tell you, Gunner, it, it's uh, it's um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and yeah. then Friday, uh, Friday, Saturday here. But then if there's a game five, it's Sunday. They go right back to Atlanta yep. and play on, su- That's on Sunday. Cra- That's crazy. That. Uh, you That's know, I, I don't need I don't need to spread it out. That's part of the problem that I always have with the NBA playoffs. Oh, the NBA is the worst. Four days yep. between game two and game three. Right. Just play the damn thing. You know, yeah. Yeah. in now fact, right. in, in the old days, before before all the all the teams, the proliferation of all the major league teams, they used to play the World Series in seven straight days because yeah. it was the it was the Yankees against the Brooklyn Dodgers, and they just had to take a bus uh, over to <laughs> Yankee Stadium in the Ebbets Field, but they played it in seven straight days. Right, and yeah. and I think once you get it going. You know, I understand that it's over in a week versus over in two weeks. I get it, but I, I'd rather have it uh, short but powerful. No you know? doubt. And see, no and doubt. see, for guys like all of us, we need the content daily. You yes, know? sir. We don't want the yeah. downtime. Amen. Oh, you know what? You know what? You can you can just review it. Like uh, you take take a little longer to review it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just you, you can pretend. That you play. We do what we do with the NFL. We do three days of recap yeah. and three days of look ahead. That's the way we go. Yeah. Yes. Well, what do you do with the bye week though? The bye week's brutal. Let's man. not talk about we that. Should we, yeah, really. yeah. all, all we should be off for the bye week, man. All we should be off for the bye week. I agree. We should, with you. We should get paid what, vacation. Gonna, Good by luck. The power vested in me by um by the people upstairs. Uh, you're off for the bye week. Okay. Well, there, hey, there you go. Hey, hey, guys, I, I guys. Remember, yeah. remember, D Gun used to take off the entire um bye week. Yes, where we all work together. Remember that it's selfish. Yeah. What, what, no, why do you want to bring that up? What? What? what, 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 what you bring that up? I remember that. Remember hey, that? Hey, hey I heard that. I heard that. Right. You just couldn't find them, and I and I'm all for it. Yeah, it's right. I, I earned that right. <laughs> Until, 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 <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, and I think I, I think that's great. I think that's great. I used that's to take awesome. one week off uh, every NFL season, every Eagle season, because the kids were younger. It was when they were off from, from uh, on holiday yeah. break, yeah. and now they're—I can't believe it—they're out of the house. So it's like I'm—I'm I'm in. I'm here. Uh, you know, you got me for the whole seventeen. Can you believe <laughs> we passed the quarter pole in the NFL season? That's no, amazing. Wow. Already, no. I feel That's like so it just bad. started. Bye. Yeah, yeah I mean, we're cool. we'll almost mid October at this point. It's crazy, That's unbelievable. Yeah. Jesus. It's nuts. It's nuts. Ah. Connor, did you did you catch those fish behind you, or, yes, or are they, they all battery operated? Come on, <laughs> <laughs> all caught, baby. From from the eighties to nineties, man. Wait, what's the team ball? You got game balls? What is that? What's the Baseballs? Game balls? The, no, what, the game, game balls. The footballs. Oh, the football is autograph ball from Andy Reid. Uh-huh. Um, the other ball is uh, one for the uh, from the Philadelphia Eagles. Gave me one for congratulations, twenty three years of service. Thanks for this. Thanks for that. So that was nice of them to do that. I didn't expect that from them. That is nice, you know. Yeah. But you know, the baseballs, the baseballs behind me are autographed by Sandy Koufax, Nolan wow. Ryan, Don wow. Drysdale, Pete Rose, mm-hmm. George Foster, 
Barry Bonds. This twenty. I can't remember so all. So where you, where you, is that upstairs or downstairs? Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's about ten miles from my house. <laughs> Barrett. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's about ten. I keep it's him in a vault. Michael Barrett perpetually <laughs> trying to get to Derek Dunn's house, and Derek is perpetually getting him the Heisman. Like you're not coming anywhere near this house. All yeah. you need to do here's the thing. All you need to do, regardless of the time of year, you just drive to the general vicinity and and then. Smell for smell for steak. Smell the air. Yeah, the barbecue. Go. Yeah, you know, yeah. Smell for barbecue. You'll find it, man. You'll find it. I've been there plenty of times. I just hang out with this. I, I eat off the grill. Whatever he leaves over, I, I, I just scrape the grill, man. I it, put it on a bun. I'm done. They're inside eating. They don't even know I'm there. Oh my god, <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, oh my goodness. Did Sandy Kopex sign that ball in front of you? What ball? The baseball. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Okay, no, that's no. out. All right. Who else? Barry Bonds. Did he sign it in front of you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. No, to be uh, honest, they all they all signed them in front of me. They were all okay. signed in front of me. Yeah. Nice. They're authenticated yeah. then. That's yeah, but the problem is – see, here's the problem, though. Because so many were signed, certain names. Now, there are a few that are of, of interest, but because so many were signed, obviously the, the price is watered down, so they're not worth what you would think they would be worth. It's just well, a collection of you. Because uh, yeah. to you. No, 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 no. Just no. Just because they sign, even if they sign their names, not just signing their names. Yeah. The more they do, you remember, you know, ever since the advent right. of uh, all of these, you know, uh, junkets. Let's go here. Let's go there. They signed 150 balls. You know, so because there's more of them, it waters down the price, the possible price on. Them. Yeah, yeah, but there's still like like for I wouldn't think the Sandy Koufax autograph. That's got to be a rarity. You know yeah, what I mean? That might, yeah. I mean, he's like Garbo, man. I mean, I know he just oh, stuff yeah. the Dodgers yeah. and everything, but but uh, I, when I did the U.S. Open tennis, he would be there almost every year. And right. I go up to him right. every year. Mr. Koufax, can we talk? We're doing the matches live. Can we talk for a second? Now, and he was always sweet. He, but he's like, no, thank you. No, I'm, I'm just enjoying it here with it. Right, and, right. And, and uh, so so that's, that's, a, that's a big one. I mean, you can make an argument that he's the, he's the greatest pitcher that ever lived. Yeah. Um, what what he did? All those no hitters. He's in, uh, was unbelievable. I got wow. a Jackie Robinson ball. I'll trade you the Robinson Ooh. for the Koufax. Oh, you know what I mean? that, that way I get one from my people. You get one from your people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would also I would also put I would also put Nolan Ryan in that category. You were talking about yeah. Sandy no, Koufax. Yeah. You look yeah. at Nolan Ryan pitched well into his 40s, and he's still throwing high 90s. Yeah. And you look at his strikeout ratio and his win ratio, and, and we were talking about this months ago, but Nolan Ryan was 41 years old when he got in that dust up on the mound where yeah. I think it was Robbie Robin Ventura. Ventura. Yep. Went after, yeah. He yeah. put Robbie yeah. Ventura into a front headlock and pounded him. And then after the game, he said, well, that's from uh, you know uh, working with Steers my whole life in Texas as a kid. Come, that's how they would hold Steers to brand him is put him in that front headlock. Robbie Ventura didn't know what hit him. When that 41-year-old 41, yeah. 41 man grabbed him. Yeah. I wonder if we're going to see more guys play longer because of, not not so much because of Nolan Ryan because he's, he, I mean, he's been out of the game for so, so long. But you right. got a guy like Tom Brady. I, you know, I'm sure you guys could name players who are older and still playing now in all the sports. Uh, Yager did it, uh, certainly in hockey. Uh, um, but you, you see Tom Brady, what is he, 45, 42? He's yeah. 42. Brady, 45, I, I'd, like, I'd say every sport 45. except football. I, I think football goes the other way. I think Brady's the exception. These guys get yeah, that second monster started. contract. They get out yeah, and their bodies out. aren't as yeah. shredded as they would be. I think they roll. But other, every other sport, why not? Well, well look yeah. at how many pitchers now pitching well into their late 30s. Mm -hmm. that, that's look, look at Verlander. Look at what Verlander. Yeah, look at Verlander. Yeah. Yeah. I also think what, once, and that's the that's the beauty of what we do. We, we get to be around sports every single day of our lives and don't have to worry about our, our careers ending. Barrett, I don't know what you went through when you – left football but i'm thinking one of the reasons i don't know about uh, tom and giselle and the marriage and i hope they work it out and, uh, because you're married 12 years you got kids together to me it's it, it, that's sad to see that go away if indeed that's happening but i'm also thinking all he has known since he's been what i don't know 8 10 12 is yeah. football right. that's it so you're so right. uh, i get he's got his side gigs that that um that are earning him millions upon millions of dollars but the the the, the regimen um, and the rigidity of being someplace every day, being in a locker room, going to yeah. meetings, breaking down film, and you you know where you got to be at every minute of the day, and now all of a sudden you're just free falling. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, 
but that was weird. Oh, you know, he's he's done, and now he's back, and 40 days later, he's back? Well, Son it don't make God. a difference. He would have bought him a, a yacht. He ain't worried about it. He going right. to get his money, and he going to... Right off to the sunset. It's, well, yeah, but well, I know we all roll our eyes. We say it's not about the money, but for those guys, it's not about the money. You no. got millions, upon no. millions of tens, tens upon tens of millions of dollars. It ain't about the money. So, so you know, you do your thing. I think it's. I Sorry, think with I'm him, it's on. more so. I think more with him, it's about being in the limelight. To be honest with you, because you know most athletes when they're making a transition, they're worried about what am I going to do to supplement my income. Here's a guy who's made as much money doing outside stuff as he has been playing football. You know, so I saw a stat that uh, I read something last week that said he's worth in excess of three hundred million dollars. So yeah. it's not about the money. I mean, what, you know, she's still worth way more than he is. Over five hundred million. Worth, yeah, that's it's yeah. incredible. Say yeah. what? So, yeah, that's yeah. gonna be yeah. one expensive divorce. Woo. Not- I know yep. he's 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 going to be getting the alimony. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> um, but hey, when you are featured in the opening ceremonies in your home country uh, for the Olympics, as she was, that's yeah. pretty yeah. pretty big. That's, that's a pretty big yeah. thing. Exactly Makes right. Tom Brady seem like a dot on the map when, wow. when you look at that. Yeah, so no question. Well, Michael, listen, we appreciate it, man. Uh, it? You, you gave us a lot of time and then some. That's yeah, it. it's awesome. That's it. Uh, <laughs> so, just saying it to John Marzano. Go, that's it. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Johnny Mars. Johnny, yeah. Johnny, Johnny Mars. Johnny Mars. Johnny Mars. All right, brother. All right to tomo- tomorrow at noon, to you. We'll, we'll check tomorrow out that pregame. One yeah. hour. Bye. One hour leading right into game time and then last out recorded. We're back with it again. And the right. same, uh, no, well, well, Wednesday will be at, uh, it's a four, it'd be like 3.30. Okay. Uh, it's a pregame. Awesome. Michael, Thanks thank you. Thanks for having you. me on. Uh, Love a you pleasure. Guys. All right. Take care, brother. Take care, Michael.